a third year project at the, okay, so I should say at the desk probably. At the Ecole Polytechnique, uh, one of our applied mathematics projects, uh, Yusuf Amin was supposed to be here today. Unfortunately, he cannot be here due to visa restrictions. Anyway, uh, I'd like to talk about community recovery in uh, a specific random model called the stochastic block model. So first, the problem of community detection. The basic idea is that you observe a certain number of connections between entities, be they people, objects, whatever. So you have this graph of connections. And what you can see here is that there isn't that much structure in this graph. And we'd like to be able to recover this structure. And the way we do this is we're going to assume that there is a, a community structure and that people belong to different communities and depending on the community they belong to, they will have a certain behavior. So we would like to start from this observation and be able to recover the structure. So all we have as information is the connection or absence of connection between people. And eventually, we'd like to be able to have something that looks like this. And what you see here is that in this example, you see that inside one community, there are lots of connections. And outside the communities, what you see as the big diagonals there, there are much fewer connections. And once we have found these type of communities, we were able to uh, simplify it and m make it look much ni uh, in a much nicer way. So this problem of community detection really has a lot of applications in uh, real life. Uh, if you just look at social networks, uh, so here I took the example, it could be uh, Facebook connections, where you have uh, friends and they, they're connected or not. And depending on their nationality or gender or whatever, you can define these, uh, these clusters. If you look at communication networks, uh, like just phone calls, and you connect people who have talked to each other by phone, then you could build uh, another type of network. Or if you look at biological networks, uh, this morning we had a talk about RNA uh, target prediction, which is very close to uh, protein to protein interactions. And then you start speaking about uh, biological networks and you recover the same uh, type of problems. And in these three examples that I show here, the community is actually natural to find. But if you go to uh, some more, uh, some different problems where you don't have obvious community structures, but you can actually build one by yourself. You engineer it to help you solve a specific problem. For instance, you have images, and you'd like to cluster images that look alike. And the way to do this would be to connect images that have some features in common, or that look alike according to some criterion. And in this way, you manage to build a graph. And you can then apply the same uh, community detection uh, procedures to this graph. You also have web page sorting, the page rank algorithm that Google uses, uh, advertisement problems, and all sorts of other problems that come back to the same issue. And the bottom line is that we'd like to be able to identify groups that behave in the same fashion. So now to the stochastic block model. It's a specific uh, random graph model that relies on communities, and the way it works is it has three parameters, basically. You will go, you're going to need to know the number of people that you have, n. I'm also going to define g, which is the membership matrix. So it's a uh, matrix of size nk, k being the number of different clusters. And q is going to be the connectivity matrix, which tells me the parameters of connections between two people. So if you have a, a, someone in community uh, one and another one in community two, they're going to connect uh, according to a Bernoulli variable of parameter q12. And this variable is going to be independent from all the others. So this is the basic stochastic block model. And just as an illustration, let's say that we start from these uh, nine individuals. And they're going to connect according to the community they belong to. So first, let's look at 
the two communities. So the two communities are going to connect with each other, like so, using the corresponding uh, parameters. And now if you look at the inter-community connections, <coughs> they're going to happen using the different parameter. So it's all symmetric uh, in my graph. And the basic problem that I want to look at is I see this. This is what I observe. And I'd like to be able to recover the original structure, which is this one, to be able to tell this is the first group and this is the second, up to a uh, permutation of the groups. OK, uh, so now that I have defined uh, the problem, uh, to, let's make it more specific. And we'd like to be able to tell when are we able to solve this problem. When are we able to recover exactly the graph to say all these people belong to this community and, and, and so on for all the communities and not to miss anyone. So we'd like to be able to, to do this with high probability in N and we'd like to have some uh, conditions or guarantees that if the matrix of connectivity uh, and if the, the membership matrix satisfies some condition, then we can solve this problem. And how? It means, do we have efficient algorithms to do this? Uh, in contrast with, can we just, do we just know that we can solve it information theoretically? So next thing I'm going to show is just a simple example where you have two communities, which is exactly the problem, the red-green problem that I showed, and present the results that I found on this example, before moving to the uh, general case of the SVM and giving the conditions for exact recovery to be possible. So when you have two symmetric communities, you basically are going to have just two parameters, because you have the intra-community connection, which is going to be the same for the two communities, and then you have the inter-community, inter which is given by the parameter Q. And obviously, you don't know what P and Q are. You just assume that there are two communities. And in this example, our condition translates to this one. So here, P and Q are the probabilities, n number of individuals. K is the number of uh, clusters, so it's just going to be 2. And M is going to be n over K, so n over 2. And so I'm showing this condition, and I like to compare it to the information theoretic condition, uh, which tells you when is uh, recovery possible, no matter what algorithm you use. Because obviously, there are cases where you cannot recover anything. If, if, the, con if the connectivities are the same, uh, no matter what community you are in, no matter inside or, or outside the community, then obviously, you cannot do much. But you can still hope that if P and Q are distinct enough, you should be able to find, to solve the problem. And basically we have this condition here, and we need at least to be in this regime here. So we have a lower bound that P and Q should be at least of order log n over n, to actually have enough connections to, to recover something. And in this case, with these parameters a and b, you have this condition here. And if you do the same and go back to our condition, you can actually check that the two are equivalent up to a constant, which just tells you that our condition is uh, optimal in the case of uh, two symmetric communities. Now to the general case. So the way we started this problem was to look at k-means. Uh, k-means, the most famous cluster in algorithm probably, just tells you that you'd like to be able to cluster uh, your data points in order to minimize <coughs> this criterion over here. And this criterion can be rewritten as a maximization problem, which is almost like a semi-definite program. When you look at the set over which you are optimizing, you can see that you have these constraints over the matrices. They are all almost linear, except the last one. So the last one is going to need some work. And we're going to rewrite this 
uh, d squared equal b to relax it in order to get a convex optimization problem. So the way to do this and to connect it to our problem is to actually define this matrix P, uh, which is to which we are going to apply this SDP. So our SDP transforms the k-means problem into this problem, which, which we defined and we called Peacock as penalized convex optimization of k-means. And now we require that the eigenvalues of B be positive and less than 1. And for this problem, now we have an SDP. And we can actually solve uh, this, this SDP in a relatively efficient manner. And this is the basic algorithm that we use. And we can prove that if the optimal partition, of course, we don't know the partition, but if it, it satisfies these conditions, so we define this delta, which is a sort of discrepancy between the groups, then you can actually recover the, the uh, exact partition with a high probability. So you can see that the probability tends to 1 when n tends to infinity. And uh, in this way, we have managed to uh, use this convex relaxation, which has been applied in many different situations, uh, and to apply it to the specific case of stochastic block models, and to prove that, it's, that it works and that it's near optimal at least in the case of two symmetric communities. Thank you for your attention. Thank you in my hands. Now we have time for a couple of questions. Hi, uh, thank you. Um, does your work uh, covers um, overlapping communities? Like you mean like when an individual can be member of several communities? Yeah. Uh, actually, this is a problem that we haven't uh, looked at. But I would assume that there is something to be done in here because this uh, so the, this uh, this uh, this uh, relaxation, this convex relaxation, has been applied to several different problems, uh, like uh, mixture of Gaussian variables, for instance, uh, clustering of random variables, and I would assume that if we if you manage to rewrite the uh, the problem in a way that 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 actually allows you to to rewrite to to use this uh, b then yes it could be used and also to other vari <coughs> variants of the sbm uh, where the connections between the people don't only depend on their community but on something else then you can consider these more refined models and try to do something that would be a generalization yes Thank you very much for your talk, very interesting. Um, so, so you have a more discriminative point of view, I think, because, uh, I, I mean, uh, what would be the generative uh, uh, probabilistic model underlying uh, this, uh, uh, the stochastic block model? Do, do you see what I mean? Uh, uh, it's, uh, what would be the, the likelihood uh, the oh. connection between uh, your criteria and the likelihood of uh, your observation. I see. Uh, so it's true. I haven't defined formally what an SBM is. Uh, is that what you actually mean? Uh, yeah, I didn't see it. Uh, yes. But, uh, so I should, yeah. I didn't give a <coughs> mathematical definition. So, OK. Let's go back to SBM. So what I assume in my, in my model that I, so I know n, g is the membership matrix, so it has values either 0 or 1. On each line, it has only 1, because each member, because we don't have overlapping communities, uh, as they mentioned. And q is a pr matrix of connectivity, so it gives you probabilities. Uh, so it's matrix between 0 and 1, symmetric, that gives you the probability of connection uh, 
between community I and J. So what you assume is that first, the connections are independent, and second, that if you take one individual from community, let's say community one, it's, it's, it, all, it already be belongs to this community, it's not random at this stage. So we, we already have J, uh, and J is not random. So you have this individual here, you have an individual in another community, they're going to connect, so you're going to have, you're going to build your uh, connectivity matrix, which is also zero or one, according to a Bernoulli variable of parameter Q, and the indices are the communities to which the two individuals belong. So Q is symmetric because uh, we have a undirected graph. Does that uh, make things clear? Yes. From this, you could actually derive the likelihood function yeah, I, I didn't because you have all the, info the information that you need. Thank you, Mr. Pichka, again. Thank you.